The views and opinions in this program are not those of CESA 7 or Spectrum. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a special board meeting on Wednesday, August 18th. Uh, we'll start things by taking roll. Beth, if you could help us with that, please. Good evening. Becker? Here. McCoy? Here. Leighton and Warren? Here. Banded Hubel? Here. Warren? Looks like Brenda's frozen, but she's here. Smith? Here. Welch? Here. All right, all seven board members are present. Um, we have one agenda item tonight, uh, which arises from um, an uh, operations committee meeting, which was held on Monday based on information that was shared at that meeting. Uh, there was a recommendation from those on the committee uh, that the board take potential action, again, based upon that information. Uh, so the agenda item reads uh, COVID-19 related mask requirements for student, staff, visitors, and contractors. Um, I will hand things over to Dawn Smith, who is the chair of the operations committee meeting um, to make any potential motions and or provide uh, feedback on that meeting. Thanks, Eric. I'll make the motion right away and then we can have conversation after. Um, I move that effective August 23rd, 2021 face coverings for all students, staff, visitors, and contractors shall be one required inside all district buildings and premises and district provided transportation, two optional when outside on district premises, and three as determined by district administration for the district student co-curricular activities as presented be approved. Second. All right, uh, we have a motion and a second. Um, we'll open things up for for discussion. Um, Don, why don't I'll, I'll let you go first as the person who made the motion? Yep, thank you. Um, so the operations committee met on Monday. Steve and his team presented us with the return to learn plan. Um, we had some conversation at the table, and the decision was made that. Um, given a bunch of changes that have happened since we last talked about masking, which was back in July, um, we wanted to have another conversation. The day after we voted on our current masking policy, the CDC came forward and changed their recommendations for masking for everyone in K-12 schools. We've also seen um, Brown County go, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, I think when we met in July, Brown County was at medium. Um, we're now at high that, and we flipped to high shortly. I mean, we've seen the numbers increase in Brown County considerably. And uh, that's why we recommended that we bring this motion forward. One of the things I do wanna call out with making this motion is, and Steve, I, I'd like you to talk more about this, but CDC has given recommendations around quarantining and those recommendations are different if we have everybody within the schools masked. So Steve, would you be able to share that with everybody, what that looks like? I sure can. So uh, when we look at quarantining, there's a couple of things that are really important for us to understand. And probably the biggest one is the role that masking plays uh, when you uh, look at the CDC recommendations. Uh, so if, if we have uh, adults and students masked in school, uh, we would follow the following uh, uh, back, uh, quarantine. Uh, recommendations. So for fully vaccinated that have no symptoms, they're asymptomatic is the term, um, and they have a uh, uh, close contact with a COVID positive person, they would not need to vaccinate. So think about our staff there and the implications for substitutes. Um, for uh, fully vaccinated uh, people who are symptomatic, 
um, while they are awaiting their COVID test results. Uh, if they've had a contact with a COVID positive person, again, they would not have to quarantine. Um, benefit for us as a district right now, we have a 24 hour or less turnaround time with our health partners uh, to get those tests back. And then, uh, and here's a, a, a key force when we look at uh, students in classrooms, um, vaccinated or unvaccinated students. So again, those 12 or older, 11 or under, um, who have close contact with a COVID positive individual, and they have been correctly and consistently masking during that time and have maintained their physical distance of three feet or more. The CDC is saying that those students do not have to quarantine, okay? Uh, so that, that uh, as we look at it, really is a game changer because if our intentionality is to get kids into class, uh, into school, and then keep them in school, um, clearly, according to the CDC, having students and staff correctly and consistently mask uh, has an incredible impact on requirements for students and staff to quarantine. Thank you. Um, I don't know, Nancy and Laura, is there anything I'm missing that we really talked about on Monday that needs to be shared with the larger group? I know the um, PowerPoint presentation that Steve had shared with us on Monday has been attached to the board docs and that's available for the public to view also. Um, I have nothing else to, um, to, in addition to what you've said, Dawn. And I just want to say, you know, it's so important to keep our kids in school. That is the main thing. And whatever we can do to keep them there, let's do it. Let's work together as a community and really, real nail this and keep them in school. Steve, we've heard from a couple different families that have choiced into Green Bay because of the actions we as we have taken as a district and our COVID mitigation strategies. Do you have any numbers around transfers in? Well, I can share just a, a real quick update on our online programming. And then I see that Josh uh, came online for a minute here, so I'll let him jump in. But um, just in the last uh, 24, 36 hours, we've had an additional 20 students enroll in our uh, uh, 4K to uh, or 5K to 6 online, 5K to 5 online school. Uh, so we're up over 100 elementary students at this point in time. Um, we're also up uh, over 75 uh, secondary students um, that are coming into our uh, previous existing online programs. And we're getting emails from uh, uh, community members who are moving their children into our district from out of our district um, and directly attributing, attributing it to uh, the attention that you as a board have paid to uh, appropriate mitigation. Yeah, and I was just going to say, Steve, I don't have the numbers um, district wide of, of the numbers that have choiced into the district based on um, based on our mitigation strategies. Um, but I do have that information available specifically for the online school. Um, and we're sitting at 104 as of right now enrolled in that online school uh, PK through five. Eric, uh, Andrew has his hand up. I can help yep, you out. Sorry. That. Yeah, thank you. I was trying to find my mute button. Go ahead, Andrew. So this is, this is open-ended, and I would be interested in some discussion about <clears throat> some kind of um, – yeah, I, I think we carefully navigate our way to uh, trying to find a balanced solution with masks, and at the – at the time I voted for the solution that I believed in when COVID was much lower than it is right now. Um, when we took that vote, I believe our, I believe our statistic for Brown County was about somewhere in the thirties per hundred thousand per week. And now it's 180 per hundred thousand per week, approximately. Um, and I know some people are, thinking that the numbers look great because they're looking at the daily average number, but the CDC, if we're just going to use the same thing to be consistent, it's new cases over the past seven days per hundred thousand. And that's where, that's where we're at 180, which is the problem. Uh, I would be interested in seeing um, if we can get a substantial reduction 
that we would have some kind of, I would say preferably a trigger to automatically change modes, but potentially would be okay with uh, triggering an automatic board meeting to review. And I'd like some, some discussion around that. If, you know, if we get, um, if this wave turns around, if we start getting, if we get to a point where we are substantially lower in cases, is that something we can have be automatic instead of having to come back to meeting after meeting? Although always emergency circumstances can result in a meeting, certainly. So uh, Andrew, would you, you would want to automatically revert go to no masking if we hit a certain level? Oh, I think that I'm not necessarily saying that. I'm suggesting that our adding, what we're essentially doing right now is we're adding masking for the, uh, adding mask requirement back to the vaccine eligible population because COVID's gone up, right? We have this in-between mode because COVID was really low. It was down into the teens. So I, I think it's at least worth discussion to say, would we go, um, would we go back to the pre-August 23rd once COVID declined significantly to a certain point? Uh, potentially, if it gets all the way back down to 50, where we have reached several times. Go ahead, Steve. I was going to offer, I think, uh, Andrew, you'd suggested uh, having a trigger in there to uh, uh, call for another board meeting uh, on probably the subsequent Monday as it goes up and uh, or goes down rather. And I, I uh, think that's a great idea because uh, as you just described, you may want to have some nuances um, to what the reduction looks like. So I, I like the idea of being able to come back together and have that conversation publicly so that I, uh, uh, student staff constituents, uh, hear that thinking and understand how it applies. Go ahead, Laura Layton. Thank you. Um, I was just going to say, um, also kind of building off what Andrew was saying and talking with some people today, I talked, I was able to take a number of phone calls and, um, the people I spoke with today were not in full trust of the CDC were um, in some cases we're not in full trust of anything um, that the government endorsed. And so in, in discussing this with the people I talk with, it seems that there's just gonna be a differing um, worldview, if you will, of people that trust maybe the CDC recommendation and those that don't. And one common ground I was able to come with with one of the gentlemen I spoke with was to at least give something that people can look forward to in, within the motion. And so saying that um, if the CDC were to go back to recommendations again, where vaccinated people didn't have to be masked or you know, when vaccinations open up to five to 11, but to at least put something like that in the motion or to include that somehow so that um, even though there's gonna be different points of view and who they trust for for experts um, that may not ever be able to be resolved, but can we come to some sort of common ground in something that everybody can look to to feel like we're going to get back to some sort of normalcy um, in the near future and, and to, um, as, as Nancy said, come together as a community the best we can and, and start being um, kind and civil to one another on a regular basis again. Go ahead, Brenda. Um, I, I'm not in, well, I'm in favor of having something that says we, you know, whatever parameters we decide to have another board meeting. I'm not in favor of having an automatic mask removal. I think this, as we've seen with the Delta variant, this is so, um, I mean, it's a, a, a moving, moving target. Um, I think we're learning about the Delta variant as we're trying to figure out how to manage um, manage the Delta variant. And I think that there's that there's just too much on the horizon that could change that we aren't even predicting now or aren't even seeing now that I would much rather have a meeting to talk about it so that we can make sure we're including all the variables that we might not put in today, but might be present, um, you know, in a month or two, 
that we would want to consider before we change the mask requirements. Okay, I'll, uh, I know um, I'll make a motion and, and try an amendment here. So my motion will just, my amendment would add the following. So it won't touch the, any of the language, it will add the following. And that a special board meeting to review masking will be automatically called when the one week COVID-19 cases in Brown County are below 100 total cases per 100,000 people. Andrew, do you mind if I share my screen really quick so you can verify yep. about it? Mm -hmm. per, per week, Andrew, is that the same number the, you were talking about the earlier? Weekly, the weekly total would be less than... Right. Which, which in raw cases would be like 265 cases. But I try to just only talk about per 100,000 to stay consistent. Okay. Are you able to see my screen? I can see it. I, okay. I think that, again, I do, I do think there's, you know, I, I feel better about a special board meeting. I, I still, I still struggle with the idea of, I, I, from the beginning, I've preferred for this to be more COVID metrics driven. And I don't like people uh, of whatever their opinion is about masking to be bounced around like this. But if the best we can do right now is have that special board meeting automatically called and do I have to say anything about how fast it's called or is there an assumption that it's not, I don't mean put it, I don't mean written up for a committee cycle. I mean, automatically called. If it happens on Friday, I'm assuming we're having it Monday or Tuesday, right? That would be the intent. Yep. We would keep track of it over the course of the week. Uh, I, when, uh, and I'd have to defer to Josh on how quickly they get those, uh, that data up on a Friday, but uh, we would monitor that. And I, uh, when we pull that up, then we would let you know on Friday, which gives us uh, time to get the, uh, the meeting posted and uh, have all of you notified. Josh, do you know what time they, they post the, that data on a Friday? I don't. Um, yeah, they've been posting it um, more in the morning lately, like around yeah. 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Um, they have not been updating the data on the weekend, like the weekend numbers come back in on Monday. So we kind of get a dump of three days on Monday. Um, but yeah, it should be up before noon on on Friday, if that helps. Now it looks like the last time we were below 100 was August 4th. So uh, Andrew, would that work for you if we pull that data on Friday, look at it, if it looks like we need to come back together, then uh, we'd be able to reach out to all of you individually and collectively as a board, advertise for Monday, that would give us time to get that posted? I, I think so. I also think it's worthy of discussion. I uh, Meetings on important controversial topics, while it may be uncomfortable to have public comment, I believe... I strongly believe that public comment, whether we're virtual or in person, should be allowed. And I just want to make make that clear. And maybe there needs to be a bigger board discussion about that. Uh, I also think we should be in person with a Zoom option unless there are safe. And I understand perhaps there's if there's safety considerations, um, you know, potentially that's an issue. But um, I guess I can... I would hope that if we have this next meeting, that people that, uh, when, when we have this meeting, when the cases get that low, that we will have an open, that we will choose to add an open forum to it. Um, but I'll, I'll stop there. That's, that's my amendment. And I can, I can vote yes if the amendment passes. Uh, the bottom line is some people will be unhappy with my vote, but COVID is 20 times higher than when I thought it was time that we maybe we're ready to loosen up a little bit. 
So I wish I wish it wasn't twenty times higher, but it's it's twenty times higher. All right. Um, is there unanimous consent to make Andrew's uh, amendment, or do you want to take a vote on that? Is anybody opposed? Yeah. Uh, okay. Looks like uh, yeah. Nancy want Nancy wants a vote. Okay. I, I'm a. I mean, opposed to voting or opposed to the the amendment. Uh, uh, are you opposed to Andrew's amendment? Let's let's yeah. just vote on it. Just vote on it. Uh, okay. 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 Let's uh, vote on adding Andrew's amendment. Um, Beth, do you just want to do that by a voice vote right now? I do. Oh, please okay. go, Laura. Can Laura, you can go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to say that you know, with and I'm okay with Andrew's amendment because it's saying that we're going to meet to discuss it again. It's not saying that you know we're going to we're not going to make a change. Um, so I think that is absolutely important that we're always willing to come back and have the conversation. So as long as that's that's clear, that's why I'm, I'm in support of, of his amendment to the motion as well. Okay. McCoy? Aye. Becker? Aye. Leighton and Warren? Aye. Vanden Aye. Warren? Aye. Smith? Hi. Welch. No. All right. Uh, so the amendment is added on a six to one vote. Um, are there any other comments on the new motion that's on the table? Can I just make a comment? Yes, go ahead, Nancy. Okay. Um, the reason I voted no is because I think it's going to take more than a week of something. And even though I think we have to just go so wholeheartedly into this and just totally wait until it's, it's gone. I mean, you know, this is a pandemic. It's not like mumps coming back. It's, it's like way beyond, I think, anything I've ever experienced before. And it seems like we're just holding to get it down just enough so we can go again. And then it seems like, well, then it comes back. And I can't wait until everybody has a chance for vaccinations. But if we don't get enough vaccinations, we're just going to be keep doing this back and forth thing. And I want, I want the kids in school. I don't want parents have to find quarantine places and, and their education is just too important. If we need to, to really nip this totally. That's why I didn't vote. Um, one thing real quick, assuming this does pass, are you saying, Steve, that the the 20 day quarantine that I saw mentioned, will that will that not apply or will the kids be able to get out of that with a negative test if this motion passes? So if kids are uh, and I'll make sure I'm using their terminology correctly and consistently masked. And if they are, uh, if they do not fit that 15 minutes within three feet, uh, uh -huh. then they do not have to quarantine. And I see Kristen uh, just activated. So I'm going to ask if she's got follow up for us. Hope you have to unmute. On you. Sorry about that. So for the 20 day quarantine, that has to do with a family member being positive. So a much different situation than a school personnel being positive. So if um, a sibling is positive, that student will have to stay home for the entire time of that sibling's infectious period, and then another 10 days, because just the chance of getting it when you're in that close household area is much higher than when you're masked three to six feet apart. But why can't that person get out of it with an, uh, why can't a negative test, I'm not saying an immediate negative test, I get that the person in the household has an infection period, why can't they get out of it with a, a, a negative test after a, some shorter number of days? Yeah, and part of the reason is, is people, we know they're infectious for up to 10 days after exposure, or they could convert to positive for that long a period of time. Yes, the CDC has offered options for people to test out earlier, but they are still recommending a full 14-day quarantine. So even going down to a 10-day quarantine with no test out option still keeps them 
in sooner or gets them back sooner than what we had last year. Last year, we had full 14 days. And, I guess and, maybe this isn't the meeting for this, but I, I think we need to we need to take a serious, again, it's a balance of COVID safety, which is important, and having kids in school, which is important. And, you know, 20 days is a really long time. And I would like to see that addressed at the next, uh, maybe that can be a topic for the next, uh, can we get that on the September board meeting? We could, and we could actually reach out to some of our healthcare partners because we've been working really closely with them to make sure that uh, what we're doing uh, is supported by their practices. And so, yeah. um, so quarantine uh, that, rules will be on. We can will, add that. Will sure. be on the September 13th board agenda with notice for possible action. We could certainly do that. Okay. All right, uh, any other comments before we take the vote? All right, seeing none, uh, we're just gonna take a uh, voice vote like we did the last one. So Beth, when you're ready, we're set to vote. Thank you. Welch? Aye. Smith? Aye. Warren? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Vanden Hovel? Aye. Leighton and Warren? Aye. Becker? Aye. All right. Motion carries 7 0. Um, with that, unless anybody has anything else, I'd look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That concludes the special meeting. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks you. All. Thank you. You have been watching the Green Bay Area Public School District's Board of Education meeting. Please visit the school district's website, www.gbaps.org, to view the program again. If you cannot fully access the information on this video, please let us know the accessibility issue you are having by calling 920 448 2025 or by email at communications at gbaps.org. We will try to provide the information to you in an alternative format and or make the necessary improvements to make the information accessible. <music>